Hey guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. Just sat out here in my little conservatory doing a thing, which I'll show you uh, in a moment. But I just wanted to say massive thanks to everybody for all their uh, great comments on my previous video. I had some really, really useful tips um, on that last video, which was where I was in the back garden sort of looking at the stars. And some of those tips have sent me down various paths where I can now well I'm, I'm kind of working on a thing that I'm doing now and I'm going to show you what I've done uh, this is my conservatory I've got uh, managed to get hold of a just a kind of a, a rubbishy old really old computer um, which I've set up in my conservatory and it turns out I may be able to um, do astrophotography and viewing the stars remotely so I can be in the warmth of my conservatory while the telescope's out in the back garden um, doing its thing and I can control it all from the computer and um, somebody put me on to uh, Backyard EOS which is uh, the name of a program which is what I've got here and the Backyard EOS is all to do with the Canon EOS now this is the, can the, the camera I, I should be using for astrophotography and this essentially controls it from a distance remotely so for example I'll just give you a little example the, the, the idea when you do astrophotography is you take lots and lots and lots of photographs and you stack them I've been looking into that still not completely keyed up on it but I've kind of got the basics and you can basically uh, train the camera you can tell it exactly how many exposures you want uh, what shutter speed what aperture and um, you know, there's a cat in my garden um, and uh, the duration of the shot as well I'll just do an example here look I can set up for five exposures uh, this is light exposures and uh, if I just click start the camera will then actually start taking five shots and uh, it will put them up here as it does them it just takes pictures and because you can take shorter pictures you don't get that streaking effect with the stars just in case your telescope's not quite aligned properly for focusing you can actually zoom right in um, and then you've actually got these little buttons up here which allow you to sort of fine-tune your focusing um, so you can zoom right in or zoom right out um, and then you can do it even more um, finely until it goes about right that's about as good as it's gonna get um, so yeah there's all sorts of uh, little really handy gadgets here although saying that when the camera is attached to the uh, telescope, it actually doesn't have a lens. So I'm not quite sure how the focusing thing is going to work on that. Um, but what I'm hoping is I can focus on, say, for example, the moon um, and then lock off the telescope. And then hopefully everything else will be in focus. I, but I, I, I've yet to um, figure that out. Hello, my <laughs> that cat is on, <laughs> is on the live feed. Uh, it's sat in my garden there. Funny. Um, right, so that's the camera control taken care of. Now, you may have seen I've got the, um, the, the telescope mount set up because I'm using another program called... What's that cat doing? <laughs> don't want him digging up my plant pots. Uh, no, he's all right. Okay, um, so I'm using something called Stellarium. Now, I set this up roughly because I know sort of north that way and uh, watch this this is amazing right now I've, I've called my telescope Rick's HEQ5 and right now it's looking at a star called Altar um, you can uh, sorry Altair now if I want to um, control the telescope manually I can choose any star I want let's choose uh, let's choose Capella uh, oh there's an interesting astro astronomical object what is that let's have a look uh, it should name it this is the Flaming Star Nebula. So if I want to go there, let's click on that little star. If I press Control 1, the thing starts to move. And uh, it will actually track the telescope. And if you look at this, the, if I zoom out, you can actually see why it will track when it comes into view. Um, where are you? There it is. Rick's HEQ5 is actually tracking uh, live on the screen to the place where I want it to go. 
So how cool is that? So I figured, you know, let's just wait till it gets there. So here it comes. And then it should hopefully track in. There we go. See that? How cool is that? So that means the telescope is now pointing at what I'm seeing on the screen here. And then all I've got to do is switch over to uh, the camera view and I should get a live camera view of what the telescope's seeing. And then I can set the camera to take photographs using these two pieces of software. So I've basically got the makings here of a little Rick's little observatory. So uh, I'm kind of quite excited really. And what I've been doing over um, the last couple of days is I've been um, ordering in like 20 meter long leads so that that way I can uh, put the telescope and the camera out there in the garden and then have them have the leads coming into this room uh, fed into the computer and then hopefully be able to control it all from in here. That means I can have nice long warm stargazing evenings and hopefully have some really cool um, get some really cool pictures out of it as well. So that's Rick World at the moment. Um, quite exciting stuff. I'm sure I'll be making more videos on it as I kind of uh, evolve, you know, as I learn and evolve. Because obviously I'm still totally beginning at the moment. This is all uh, uh, just sort of, you know, um, it's all new to me. It's a hell of a steep learning curve. Um, and there's so much to learn and know and everything. And also I want to say thanks for um, all the uh, the people who suggested things like field flatteners and uh, various uh, filters and things as OIII filters. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to see if I can get the, the actual physical mechanics of this setup working and if it kind of works and it, and it kind of goes the way I want it to and it kind of you know because it's all theory at the moment um, then I can start looking into making improvements you know with filters and, and various lens attachments and things to try to improve on the uh, the photographs but for now I'm just looking at the raw fundamental basic mechanics of getting this kind of a setup to work out there remotely and um, but so far it's looking promising so I'm quite excited so there we go right I'm not going to waffle on anymore this was just a quick little catch-up video um, oh the other thing <laughs> the other thing is the car or the van um, I'm, I'm going to be vanless for the next week uh, unfortunately the um, the ABS uh, module has to be sent off to be repaired and it's going to take a week because it's got to be done through the post uh, so but apart from that I think it's past the MOT so hopefully I should be nicely set up um, once I get the van back I should be set up for another year uh, of motoring hopefully um, having it serviced as well so we should be ready to hit the road so as soon as we get some nice weather some nice clear skies I'm gonna be hope hopefully getting out there hitting the road and getting to some of these camping sites um, these dark camping sites and just um, seeing what I can do out there so anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And no doubt I will catch up with you again in the next video. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to thumbs up. You can subscribe by clicking here. Here is a video that you might like. And here is my latest video. And here is a factoid. In the USA, November is Sweet Potato Awareness Month.